Turn to 2 Timothy, chapter 2. Before we get started here. Get some prayer requests. Amen. About prayer requests this morning. Okay. Which one? Sometimes it does. Yep, yep. Other prayer requests. Pray for me, and I, I my teeth are doing a whole lot better. But yeah, I got I got to get rid. Of, I got to be careful. I don't whistle. So <laughs> <laughs> does look better, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, in the process, in the process, I'm I'm ready for all the the adjustments and everything to get done. Because I'm ready for solid food. <laughs> soft food? <laughs> I'm tired of soft food. I'm tired of soup. I'm tired of noodles. I'm tired of... <laughs> so anyhow, all right. So, okay. All right. So pray for our church, too. Pray for our nation. Uh, this new year, this new year, uh, we, uh, here at the church, we're starting some stuff, uh, uh, Brother Damien back there, he got just got baptized last Sunday. Praise the Lord. He's going to be taking over our AV corner. Amen. So he's going to be helping with that. He's got a, that, he's got a background in that. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, sister, sister Liz is going to be teach, start, going to start teaching the little ones. So then for the next couple of Sundays, she's going to sit in with Brother Johnny. And, and her, him and sister, she's going to sit in with... Sister Berta and Brother Johnny, it's kind of kind of a how do you say transition? I Amen. Be back there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a transition. So all right. So praise the Lord. All right. So let's go to let's go to the Lord in an opening prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, God, thank you for your love, your mercy, and your wondrous grace. Thank you for the very forgiveness of sin. I ask you to touch this Bible study time now, Lord, as it's in your hands. Be merciful, forgive me my sins, that I may be a clean vessel for you to use. So, Lord, I pray these things in your precious and holy name, and pray you'll come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. Uh, Raymond, I'm going to ask you if you'll pass these out, please. Okay. Pass those out, please. I think i got enough for everybody. Well... well the way we the way we do things right now is is uh, uh, is uh, uh, Jake preaches the second and third Sundays of the month, and I preach the other. Careful there, Raymond. And I preach and I preach the other Sundays. So the, the Sundays Jake preaches, I teach Bible study, and the Sundays I teach, Jake teaches Bible study. All right. So I got to put it on my heart. My next several Bible studies are going to be on, you need two more? Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. My next, my, my next series of Bible studies is going to be on lectures done by a man named Dr. James Wilkins, all right, called Perfecting the Saints. Perfecting the Saints. So every time, I'm going to be given out, and you'll see that those, that's, a, a, that's for something for you. That's for you to do during the week, okay? You notice there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or first day of the week, so on and so forth. So those are uh, uh, for you to do during the week, okay? All right? Because my, as a pastor, as a preacher, as an evangelist, one of my jobs is to help Christians grow. Amen? All right? So in first in Second Timothy, in Second Timothy chapter two and verse four. 15 and I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you to to memorize some scriptures so you might even mark this down as a memory verse okay just to memorize scripture in 2nd Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 
it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The, the, the operative word or the important word there I want you to notice is workman. Amen? Workman. Because that's what we're to do. We're to be workmen. So I'm going to call this series, I'm going to call this series, okay, our, this first lesson is called Teach Them to Observe and Do. All right? Teach them to observe and do. Okay? That, I mean, this, that's the foundation of which the following four lessons or the rest of these lessons will rest on. Now, I'm going to try and do one a, a, one a week. Notice I said try, okay? So it's going to be important that we start on time. But like I said, this morning we got started a few minutes late because we're kind of we're in transition of doing some things this year. And I'm looking forward to a great year this year. Amen? For, for, for the glory of God. Okay? And that's why God has also put this series of lessons or this series of lectures on my, on my heart. All right? So it's the foundation of, of, the, of the following lessons. I'm going to put it that way. All right? And this is the reason that we ask the pastor to pair. And I'm going to try, as we, as we go forward, there's going to be some things that we are going to need to team up to do. Does that make sense? And when we do that, I'm going to pair people up. Sometimes pairs already work out. Okay? All right? Jake and Arlene are already a pair. Amen? Okay? All right? I lost my pair. Amen? So, so I may have asked someone to go work with me on certain things, okay? All right? So as we go forward, all right? Okay? And as we do this, I'm going to make sure I'm not going to try and send out two novices to do something. There's going to be one person that's already experienced. Go with someone that's never done what we may do, what we will be doing in the future. Okay? All right? Okay. So there again. In this verse, or what I'm going to call your memory verse, the reason we should study is that we might be a good workman. How many, how many were ever just a journeyman in anything you ever did? Do you know what a journeyman means? Journeyman means an experienced individual. You start out as a what? An apprentice, right? Okay, and you work toward being a journeyman. We don't always, we don't, we never start out being the best at what we are without work. Amen? And sometimes that includes studying. As being a pastor, as being a preacher, I didn't just start well. I can say I did start preaching, but I had to start studying about being a preacher, studying the Bible, that I might be a better preacher, that I might be a better workman, that I might be a better pastor. Okay? Well, it's the same thing with us as Christians. We need to study that we be, be, might be and can be and will be better workmen. Okay? Better workmen. In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, it says, Teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. This is Jesus in the Great Commission. He says, Teaching them to do whatsoever I have commanded you. All right? So as a pastor, as a preacher, as an evangelist, all right, I have a responsibility to do my best to teach you to be the proper kind of workman, okay? All right, so let's start with this lecture, okay? I'm going to ask this question. In that verse, Matthew 28, verse 20, where he says, teaching them to observe, uh, I'm going to ask this question. Who is them who is them us it's the church amen it's God's people all right listen I, 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 I have a personal conviction and it goes right along with brother Wilkins as he even states in his lecture I have a personal conviction that Jesus started the church while he was here on earth okay so the church started under Jesus Christ. We can go back to Matthew chapter 16 and see where Jesus started the church, okay? And it was his personal ministry, okay? All right? 
And to that church, or to this church, or to the church he started, he gave the great commission to evangelize, right? To evangelize, to baptize, to teach, and to observe. To observe, okay? Now, I know there's lots of organizations, there's lots of groups out there winning people to Christ, but sometimes, and I'm too unfortunately, many of those, after they've led them to Christ, <laughs> just drap them. You know what the word drap means? Drop them. Amen? They just drop them. They don't follow through with anything. It'd be like, it'd be like and I love this illustration that, 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 that Billy Graham came up with. It'd be, it'd be like, it'd be like y one of y'all y'all having a baby. Amen? I know there's only one person here that can actually have a baby, so I don't, I'm not going to get it. But anyhow, we can all be parents, right? Okay? It'd be like having that baby. It'd be like bringing that baby home, okay, because the baby's born. It'd like, be like bringing that baby home, walking into the kitchen and walking up to the refrigerator and opening the refrigerator door and say, there's your bottle. Stick it in that microwave over there for 25 seconds. It's going to be just the right temperature for you. Then carrying that baby upstairs and taking it into the bedroom and saying, there's where you're going to sleep. There's where your clean diapers are. There's where your dirty diapers go. And then taking that baby into the living room and setting it down in front of the TV and say, you're on your own. How many of us would do that? We wouldn't do that with a baby, would we? What do we have to do? We have to nurture and raise that child up, don't we? Amen? And that's what we as a church, we as Christians, we as pastors, amen? We as, as evangelists, we as teachers, we as mature Christians need to be doing with younger Christians or, or with the church. Teaching them to be the kind of Christians that God would have them to be. All right? So listen, his plan was to evangelize the community through local churches. Christians, listen, brothers and sisters, we have a responsibility to this valley. This is where we're at. Amen? This is where we're at. We have a responsibility to share the gospel with the people around us. Amen? We have a response. Listen, if, if, if and, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use Brother Tony, Brother Johnny for, for, an, for an example. You understand? If, if we didn't, if I'd have never gone to his home to speak to him about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, Brother Tony and his family would have never gotten saved. Probably. Amen? Now I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a, take a little step back because I said went to his home. But you see, he had a friend that had a heart for him and had a heart for his family. Amen. Joe Silva. Amen. Said, came to me and said, Brother Jim, I've got a precious friend that I want to know about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Will you go tell him? Amen. Remember that day he showed up to your house and the kids there and it was crazy and it was wild. And, amen. All your kids, amen. But I was able to share the gospel with him and his family. Now, they didn't all get saved that day, but in the process of time, they all accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Why? Because someone in the church had a heart for someone else. And folks, that's what we have to have. We have to have a heart for the souls of other people. Because that's our job, that's our responsibility, is to lead, lead people to, corrupt, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Well, listen, Jesus, Jesus is our great example, okay? In Acts chapter 1, Jesus began both to do and to teach, and doing came before teaching. Amen? You've got to be an example, all right? Did you, hear, you heard the old saying? Do as I say, not as I do. And that's not what we ought to be doing as Christians. It ought to be do as I do. Amen? Let me guide you and direct you and teach you in what needs to be done. Do as I do. All right? Listen, Jesus himself, he, 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 he strongly, he was, he was strongly against the scribes and Pharisees 
as hypocrites because in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 3, they, they said, they say, he says, they say and do not. Okay, who were the scribes and Pharisees? They were the great leaders or the teachers of the time. They were the leaders of the church, and they had a bad habit of saying, do as I say, not as I do. Okay? Oh, God, help me to never be that kind of preacher or teacher. Do as I say, not as I do. I, as I say or as I challenge you to do things, uh, it's going to be those things that I'm willing to do myself. Amen? As I'm willing to do myself. All right? Okay? Listen, listen. There are two vital responsibilities that the verses that we... And I'm, okay, turn over here to Matthew chapter 23. Let's, let's look at it, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, let me, let me, I'm going to, let me back up, okay. All right, okay, excuse me, back at Matthew chapter 20, I said 23. Matthew chapter 20, I'm going to look at verses 26 and 28. I'm going to do 28 before 26, okay. Matthew chapter 20, look at verse 28. 28, yep. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. We back up to verse 26. It says, But it shall not be, but it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Alright? Okay? There's two great responsibilities, two vital responsibilities taught in these verses. Number one is to make disciples, that is to win souls. Number two is to teach them to deserve, observe all things. And literally, number three, you, the saved, born-again believers, are charged with the task of winning souls and teaching others to win souls. Whew. Listen, church, it's a grave responsibility that we have I pray we've, we've not gotten a hold of it as we should, and I pray this year we'll get a hold of the responsibility we have to win people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We make disciples by winning people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We don't make disciples by having babies. Amen? But we do have a responsibility to raise our babies in God's house so that when the time comes, they'll accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. And then they become disciples too. Amen? All right? Okay? We must get a hold of this fact that we have a responsibility to lead people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay? I've got to try and hurry if I'm going to get this first lesson done. All right? Okay? Listen, it's our personal commission. We have a personal commission to teach others. Matthew, again, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, it says, teaching them to observe. Okay? All right? In 2 Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, okay? In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, the Bible says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses... The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Okay? All right? Listen, listen. It's a, I guess probably the best way to, to refer to this is it's a revolving commission. Okay? Revolving commission. We teach others who teach others who teach others. Amen? But once we teach others, we have a responsibility to continue to teach others. Did that make sense? Amen? All right? Okay? We, have, we, 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 send, our, we send our kids to school, don't we? 
And normally there's a first grade teacher, and that first grade teacher teaches first grade for years. But she teaches over and over and over. Amen? All right? So we have a responsibility to be teaching others. Okay? Listen, there are four responsibilities teachers have in this particular verse. Look, look at it again. I'm going to read it again. And these things that thou hast heard of me, that me is Paul. He's speaking to Timothy, okay? These things thou, who is Timothy, has heard of me, Paul, okay? Among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. So Paul taught Timothy. Timothy taught faithful men, all right? Who shall be able to teach others also. And the faithful men taught others. See where that goes? Amen? And the others are to teach others. Amen? Okay? So listen, as, as I might say this, Christians, we should never have a desire just to stay where we're at as a Christian. We should always want to be growing, and we should always be wanting to teach others because, you understand, we'll never, we'll never we'll never obtain being better at what we do unless we have a desire to teach. Or, and you know who learn, often learns more than the student? The teacher. Amen? The teacher. So we should be, we should be doing our best to learn all we can and sharing it with others. We should never be this way. It's mine, mine, mine. <laughs> Amen? One of the things, one of the thing, one of the things that I, one of the, when I was in the, when I was in the corporate world and I was in the ready mix business, I always had a desire for those that worked for me to learn to be better at what they did, and in that process, I'd lose employees. Why would I lose employees? Because they'd learn better to do better things, to do other things, and they'd move on to other places in the company. Amen. All right. That's how we ought to be. We ought to have a desire to teach others that they might be able to teach others and to move on. Okay? All right? Okay? So listen, what were the others to do? Listen, it was that others, those others were to teach others and others and others and others and others. Amen? One generation teaching and another generation. Okay? And that's what's happened until we got to where we're at today. Okay? All right? Well, Peter commanded the believer to sanctify, okay, to be a, to the believer to sanctify the principle of soul winning. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, look at verse 15. Be, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Amen? What is that hope that's within us? Jesus Christ. Amen? So he's saying here, sanctify. And sanctify means what? To set aside or set apart to master or to get a hold of. Okay, and what is it we're to get a hold of or sanctify? The Lord God in our hearts. Okay, this means we need to know the plan of salvation. That would be a great set of lessons. If you don't know how to win somebody to Christ, that would be a great set of lessons to teach on how to lead somebody to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And one of the great ways to learn to do that is to go soul winning with somebody. Amen? Just go soul winning with somebody. All right? That's the best way to learn is to go. Amen? Is to go. All right? Why? We're to keep, listen, we ought to be able to tell others why we have the hope of salvation. Because Jesus Christ is in my heart. Well, they need to know how to have that, that also, don't they? Amen? All right? All right? 
just kind of a side note, there will be those that say, we don't have to ask Jesus Christ into our heart to get saved. No, we don't. It's a term we use, okay? We have to believe on Jesus Christ as our Savior. Amen? And that's something we ought to take to heart, okay? That's something we ought to take to heart because that's where he ought to be. And when I say our heart, that means our, the very center of man where mind, body, and soul all comes together. All right? Okay? Who do we give that answer to in verse 15 of chapter 3 of First Timothy, or First Peter? All right? Who? To every man. What? The hope we have. How? With meekness and fear. <laughs> And somebody once told me, Brother Jim, I'm afraid to go soul winning with you. And I said, why? Because of the way you preach. And I went, okay, what do you mean? Well, if you were to knock on somebody's door and you'd start at their front door, I said, no, 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 no. Preaching and winning somebody to Christ is two different things. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> with meekness and fear. Amen. Now, I don't, I don't mean that cowering fear. All right? Fear, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? It's a reverential desire to please God. Amen? A reverential desire to please God. Amen? All right? Not fear, not a cowing fear. All right? But I might say a fear to disappoint God, to let God down. Amen? All right? In meekness and fear. Okay? All right? Okay? So, Peter, what Peter's telling us here is we are to become a teacher. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12 says, For the time, for the time you ought to be teachers. Amen? For the time you ought to be teachers. We have a responsibility to teach. Okay? Listen, if, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't incur, incur, inc uh, listen, if you don't please, listen, you displease God by drawing back. Hebrews chapter nine, 10 and verse 39. All right. Which you will, which will, the question, all right. I guess part of this is the question, my question through this is, are you, are, do you have a desire to please God or not? Does that make sense? We either please God or we don't. Okay? We can not please God or we can displease God by not doing. Right? Okay? All right. Number three, the ones who are responsible for teaching and developing. Who are the ones that are responsible for teaching and developing? Okay? Listen, the local church was created for the for for the very for the, that very task of developing those they win. But the Bible's very specific concerning who is to develop the members and how. All right? So, again, whose responsibility is it for developing members? Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. All right? Just a quick, just a, just a, a, a quick note here. There's no more apostles, okay? When the last apostle died, that, 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 it, okay? To be an apostle, you had to literally see Jesus Christ on this earth. So those that call themselves apostles today, they can't be an apostle because there's no way you can literally see Jesus Christ on this earth today. He's in heaven, okay? All right? And some prophets, okay? The prophets have gone away too. So it leads us to the last three, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. 
look at look look at their responsibility. Look at verse twelve. For the what? Perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Okay? All right? So he, God give us evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Those are mis, ministerial gifts, all right? Okay? For what? For the perfecting of the saints. What does perfecting mean? For equipping, developing, training, and bringing to maturity. And who is it? The saints. You're either a saint or not. Amen? What does that mean? You're either saved or lost. If you're saved, you're a saint. And I don't mean a statue standing a little thing in the middle of a church. Amen? Okay? All right? Okay. No. Paul used that word at, for us time and time again in his, in his epistles or his letter in the New Testament that we become saints. Okay? Even, even now in Ephesians chapter 4, and it refers to us as saints. Amen? You can't teach a statue anything, can you? Okay? No. You teach people. Amen? You teach the saved. All right? Okay? The saved. Who? Saints. Again, you're either a saint or you ain't. I like that. You're either a saint or you ain't. Amen? All right? Okay. What are we do? What are they? What are we doing for the work of the ministry? Okay, first the saints are to win souls. Secondly, the saints are to teach them to observe and to do all things. Again, we get into that rotation, that revolving situation, right? The preachers are to train the members to the place where they have a high level of perfecting or efficiency in soul winning. All right. It doesn't do us any good to teach Sunday school lessons on how to be a good Christian if you're not a Christian to begin with. Amen? And who do we need to be teaching to be good Christians? Those that have been one to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, guys. If we just keep teaching those that we know that are saved the same thing over and over and over, we're not accomplishing anything. Amen? We're spinning wheels. Yep. You know how we're going to win? You know how, we, you know how we're going to fill the church? By going out and winning people to Christ. Oh, yes, we can invite family, and we ought to be inviting our family. Amen? We ought to have a desire to see our family in church. Amen? All right? Okay? But we've got to go further than that. Again, if Brother Joe Silva hadn't had a heart for his friend, Tony Romero, Tony Romero and his family would have never gotten saved. Amen? Christians, that's something we got to get a hold of. Okay? I, I, wouldn't it break your heart to get to the judgment seat of, to, to be witness at the great white throne judgment and see those that you know or have as friends have to stand before the great white throne judgment because they never accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and they never accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior because you didn't tell, him, tell them about him? Amen? Wow. That'd be heartbreaking. Amen? I think if, if, if there'll ever be a tear shed in heaven after we die, that's the place we'll shed the tear. Because of that one that we could have witnessed to and we didn't, and because we didn't, they went to hell. Amen? And that's a truth, and that's a and that's a truth we can't we can't neglect that we neglected far too long. All right, okay, all right. So, who's the preacher? Who are the preachers to develop the 
who are the preachers to develop the membership in soul winning? All right? Listen, they're to teach and develop by way of example. Okay? The Bible says Jesus both began, Jesus began both to do and teach. First Peter chapter three, five, first Peter chapter five and verse three, Peter said, Peter said, being an example. First Peter chapter three and verse five. Peter said, being be, be, be the chapter five and verse three, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. All right. I've got, to, I've got to stop after this. Okay? I'll pick this up next week. No, this will be all right. Okay. No, I'll finish it up. But I've got to, I've got to do it this way. All right? Okay. All right? Okay. And, 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 and Jake, this, this, this actually points to you and I. We have to be exa an example to the people of this church as soul winners. Amen? Because that's where it starts. It starts with you and I. Amen? Amen? We are the exact... Listen, we cannot challenge people of the church to win people to, to Jesus if we're not doing it. Amen? If we're not doing it. Okay? Okay? Listen. How did the Apostle Paul develop great soul winning churches? Okay. The Apostle Paul would go to a city, would go into a city which was totally heathen. Amen. Think about the think about the Apostle Paul. Back then, Christianity was just getting started. You didn't get to go into a you know you know, bless our hearts. We're we're in we're in a we're in a area that is that is highly catholic okay all right the apostle paul went into an areas that were completely heathen all right and was able to start churches and lead people to the saving knowledge of jesus christ we have a responsibility to do the same thing here okay all right what am i saying listen we have the truth there are too many out here in this valley that we have a responsibility to reach that don't know the proper way to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Am I, am I saying they're heathens? I'm saying they're lost. And we have a responsibility to teach them and lead them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He'd stay for a, anywhere from a few weeks to three years. But when he left, he left behind a, a, a sound, highly trained, self-supporting church. Okay? And that church was usually had a large membership with pastors and deacons and would continue on in the scriptural way even after the apostle left. Okay? All right? We've got, to, we've, got, we've got to step up our game in this coming year. In this coming year. Okay? This coming year. All right? Well, so it boils down to this. Okay? Jesus left us two lingering truths. He left us two vivid truths. All right. Okay. First is a warning that he would come back from heaven, that he could come back from heaven at any moment. All right. And each servant will have to give an account for his life at his return. So it boils down to this. Listen, the Bible teaches method as strongly as it teaches doctrine. Listen, why limit the beautiful doctrine of God's word by missing the method of mass evangelism? Pastors and evangelists are given to the saints in order to develop them by example in the ministry of winning souls and training those who are one to win souls. And that's done through trainer and silent partner training teams. Okay? If we get back to the New Testament method, we'll have a New Testament church or we'll get to New Testament results as we saw, as we can see in the book of Acts. Okay? All right. So I'll have lesson number two next week. You've got, you've got devotions to do this week. Okay? Do one a day. 
All right? So there's, they're, they're there for you to do one a day. It's to help you to learn to be what God would have us to be. Okay, we'll take us a short break. <laughs>